Uh, no, please don't put that in. Nope. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> nope. Bloop, boop, boop. Bloop, doop, doop. Bloop, doop, doop, Hey everybody, we're here to remember games from a time gone by. A time when some of us were we, when even I was but an embryo. That's right, video games from the year 1991. You may have seen the video I posted two weeks ago on games that are on the Switch online service. So check that out. Uh, we're not gonna spend a lot of time with those. So Battletoads is a really fun uh, beat-em-up game. It's difficult. It's very much like a take on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but it's much more older teen audience intended than the younger kid audience that the Turtles are intended for, at least the car the cartoon. It didn't have a cartoon iteration and stuff. It seemed to be really popular, but it was geared toward younger audiences. It might have been, but that's the same thing that happened with the Turtles, because the Turtles comic book was definitely more of a teen thing with like a lot more gore and violence. And then the cartoon show was suddenly made for kids to sell toys. So the same thing might've happened to the Battletoads, I don't know. Oh, hi kitty. It's funny that we're talking about the original Second Densetsu because I'm just about to start Second Densetsu 3 on the Switch. Yeah, that's the Mana series. And I've only played one and two before, so this will be fun. One's not great. Um, I feel like, for lack of a better word, it's kind of the first expansive release in the series. The story is a little more expanded upon. The party characters are definitely more expanded upon. It's not my favorite Final Fantasy, but it's. I think it's good for the time for this year. Yeah, it's the first one that has a, a, an actually interesting story. It's the first that has player characters that have any development to them. Yeah, it's. I think it's a huge step forward from one and one through three, especially three. Okay, so Home Alone is one of my all time favorite movies, probably top favorite. But the video game was a gift to me after that came out and it was just an obsession for several, several months. It's definitely been categorized as one of the harder NES games from what I've read because it was almost impossible to beat. I don't think I ever did. Basically what you had to do is wander around the McAllister house, which was huge. It had five levels, including the basement and a tree house outside. You had to wander around setting traps for the bad guys who were constantly following you. Some of the traps would trip them up for more time than others. Some of them would only work two or three times before they would disappear. And you had to go around picking up and collecting all these traps and just try to survive and find all the little uh, nooks and crannies within the house. It was actually a really interesting puzzle game to try and figure out, okay, where are all these magical hiding places within a very limited environment? Because it's not a side scroller. So it's, it's just this one chunk of space where you have to survive and it was it was really very difficult but it was so much fun the graphics were really good for the time and for the nintendo it is on the nes mini we discovered a while back and i watched you play a little i love this game uh i discovered it in adulthood actually i didn't play it as a child i think i didn't even have a video game system in this year um you didn't have one because you were an embryo at the time yeah, exactly. Exactly. I did. I was a thought, really. I, I didn't <laughs> exist. This game holds up. I preface to that to say that when you are an adult, I think some of these games don't have as much longevity for you anymore. You don't enjoy them as much anymore. And I say when you're an adult, what I really mean is because now we have the hindsight of games with much higher technology levels and you know uh and therefore are much more expansive often look better right but this game holds up even as i someone who have played you know most of the zelda C franchise as developed in the year 2023 i still enjoy this game and it feels as expanded in some ways as like ocarina of time or the, or the games that are sort of considered to have put the series on the map. The plot is really engaging. The gameplay is, especially for the time, really developed. I kind of can't say enough good things about it. <laughs> this is actually probably my favorite Zelda game. I know a lot of people are like, what, really? Uh, but I do want to push back a little bit on you saying that later games put Zelda on the map because the original Zelda put Zelda on the map. 
and it was a huge smash hit and everyone loved it then. But it's interesting how this is the third Zelda game and the second one like iterated so much on the franchise and then this one went back to being much more like the first game. Yeah, it's a simple story, but you don't really need a complex story all the time in a game. This existed on like all of the consoles. It's a fun little puzzle game. You basically have this like tube that lemmings come pouring out of. They just keep walking in a straight line unless you tell like one lemming like, okay, you you stand there with your arms like this so that people can't pass you. So when an, another lemming hits you, you bounce, they bounce and walk in the other direction. And you have to like basically guide them to the goal at the end safely without, you know, falling to their deaths or something like that. Um, yeah, there's some lemmings that can build. There's some lemmings that can do other things. It's real cute. This was my favorite game to rent from Blockbuster. This was a wonderful game based, of course, on the original Disney movie that came out in 1989. There was a lot of really interesting backgrounds and just really interesting things to do, like with the seashells and the, the bubbles that you would trap things in. The colors were beautiful. The music was, was good based on the movie. This was another one I never actually beat. In fact, I don't think I ever faced Ursula because it was hard. This was like a classic era of what we call Nintendo hard. This was not, oh, anybody can play this and here's a big guide right in front of you to tell you what you do. No, you jump in and you play and you figure it out. Well, part of that is because um, a lot more importance was put on the manuals of games in this time. Yeah. And they, they expected people to read the manual before they played but the game. And you didn't always get those if you got it from Blockbuster. Right, right. Now, if you um, play a lot of later games, then yeah, the, they know that people aren't going to read the manual. So they have to, you know, tell you how to play the game while you're playing the game. But it's interesting how we're talking about learning how to play the game while you're playing the game, because even the earliest Mario does that. When you start the game, you see a line of coins in a little arc, and that suggests to you like, oh, I can jump and get those. And that's a, that, that right there teaches you how to jump. And so the little things that game developers do to like sneakily teach you how to play the game while you're playing the game. Though that said, I don't remember there being a lot of that in this Little Mermaid game. And this is a difficult game, yeah. The technical term for that is conveyance. Yeah. I had this on Nintendo and it was super fun. I remember how engaging things like auctions were in the game. So everyone knows that there are actually a lot of rules in Monopoly that no one knows, that no one actually plays by. In the official rules of the board game, if someone chooses to not buy a space they land on, it's supposed to go to auction. The way the auctions work in the game are really exciting and there's this really engaging music that plays. And like things like when you get out of jail, there's a little voice clip that says, don't be coming back now. And it sounds really janky because it's on an NES, but it's, it, I don't know, I thought, it, I always thought it was really delightful. It's all in the details. Did y'all ever play any of the SimCity games? I tried, yes. I couldn't get into it and I don't know why. I can respect what makes it fun, but it stays fun for me for about like 30 minutes and then I'm kind of done. <laughs> yeah, I get that. And I kind of feel the same way, but we had it on our computers in school and the computer game is much more advanced than the NES game or the Super NES game, which is the one that I had at home. And I really loved the school computer version. And I had the Super NES one and I played it and I enjoyed it. But then that like, that is one of the few games that I've ever sold just because I did get tired of it but now I find myself occasionally wishing like can I find a free-to-play online SimCity for just like 20 minutes because it's one of those games that I just have like a nostalgia for all right so several years into the life of the Genesis they finally get their big mascot Yay. my name is Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> I am a blue hedgehog my name is Sonic the Hedgehog. I am a blue hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog was a game changer in terms of side-scrolling adventures. I don't know if Sega Genesis programmers designed him to be the antithesis of Mario, but it's what he became because a lot of people either had the Nintendo series or the Sega Genesis series. That's just a natural divide. And a lot of people would get into arguments about which character was better. And I'm like, who really cares? The Sonic the Hedgehog series was excellent in all kinds of new ways, and it upped the game in side scrollers and in a lot of other ways for both both systems, because then Nintendo had to compete. But I always thought he was really cute. He had a lot of attitude. Sonic the Hedgehog, the game was, again, 
quite difficult. Things like the graphics and the sound effects that just like Mario became super iconic, I can still hear what those rings ringing up uh, sounds like in your head. Sort of a great villain, you know, very present, but not very interesting. As a character himself, I was more interested in how like, wait, why are all those bad guys I just killed turning into bunny rabbits, you know? So that was a really interesting concept that we were releasing these animals back into the wild or just releasing them from the bad guy's clutches. So it was it was just really interesting in a lot of ways and got your attention visually. Sonic was absolutely created to be a rival for Mario. I think it's funny how the Genesis, which is I think two years older than the Super Nintendo, is so much more powerful than the Super Nintendo. But the Super Nintendo was still selling way better, largely because of Mario. And so then Sega's like, we need the killer app. We need the the game that will make everyone want to buy our system. And that includes having a marketable mascot. And so Sonic is that. And he's intentionally like sassy and punky uh, to be at the opposite of the like all the time happy-go-lucky Mario. Yeah, and to me, the uh, Sonic games are like Mario on caffeine. It's sort of like Mega Man and other patterns we're seeing, even with Mario in some ways. Many of the Sonic games at this stage are kind of carbon copies of each other uh, with some minor uh, like changes in levels and, and, and such. But I always enjoyed every Sonic game I played pretty much. It's one of those things that's different enough from the original that it still works and it feels like something you can't get elsewhere. And different enough from the original, you mean different enough from Mario? Right, because it was clearly the answer as, you, as both of you were alluding to, to Mario. Someone actually tinkered with the arcade cabinet of the game to make it go faster and suddenly everyone wanted to play that one. Capcom's like, okay, we'll make it. <laughs> so they made Street Fighter II Turbo, and then suddenly fighting games were all the rage. They existed before this, but they weren't, they were just like a little niche thing that was a technical challenge more than a, like a, a button mashing fun time. Which came out in the arcades in 91, uh, but it came later to the SNES. I actually never played that one, but I know that's a lot of people's favorites. It is a really good game. It's another fighter game, just like the other Ninja Turtles uh, that yeah. you might expect. I do remember playing it in like, you know, the Chuck E. Cheese type arcades and things like that. And it was very popular, but it's kind of, it's almost hard in my memory to distinguish a lot of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fighting games because... Eventually, you just picked which turtle you wanted to be and just, you know, tried to kick ass at it. Yeah, beat em ups or beat em ups just depends on, you know, if it's the right difficulty level for you and if the characters you like are in it or not. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. Tiny Toon Adventures was another blockbuster favorite for me, and it was just, it was brilliant in every way. The original Tiny Toon Adventures was just this epic scrolling, side-scrolling adventure, and each character, of course, had its own quirks and, and play methods, and it was graphically beautiful, musically beautiful. I had this and I enjoyed it, but it, it's also a difficult game. I think part of the reason that I didn't play the NES as much as the SNES is because games on the SNES are easier. Especially when you have a game genie. I had a Game Genie for both, uh, but basically the only way I could play the, the NES with many of these games is with the Game Genie. There are only so many times that you uh, get frustrated and like, I just want to see more of the game. <laughs> also, really difficult, but this one is a really pretty NES game. It looks really nice. And um, you play as Jerry and Tom is the boss. And it's fun how all of the obstacles in the game are things that seem small to a human, but are big to a mouse. Like there are these water droplets that drip out of a leaky faucet, but they're like giant globes, almost the size of Jerry that you have to avoid at different points. It's, it's a cute and fun game. All right, well, that's our last game. Um, any other thoughts? The fact that there are so many games coming out that feel, again, like kind of carbon copies of each other, like, again, the Mega Man series, and I already referenced them, and the fact that you have these competing systems in NES and Genesis that are in rapid succession getting technological one-ups on each other, I would be interested to find out, and maybe someone who knows more about this than I know about it could comment in the comment section, but I'd be interested to find out like what technological advances were really happening in this year behind the scenes, because it almost feels like they were trying little adjustments at a time 
with a lot of these repeat iterations of games. Yeah, I think that's fair. And sort of what I was talking about earlier about how the Super Nintendo was actually way less powerful than the Genesis, that is true for Nintendo consoles across the board. The Nintendo console is always like the last one to come out in its generation. And it's always, well, almost always the weakest one. Some of these things we can compare what Nintendo was doing at the time to what Sega or when we get to it soon, Sony, and then soon after that, Xbox is doing at the same time. Um, yeah, it's like the other companies are miles above, but Nintendo still is like a family favorite. It often has the best games for a wide range of players. It occurs to me now that video gaming is coming into sort of a new time in its life in terms of its target audience, because video gaming is becoming slowly more mainstream. And it's, and it's a great thing, but I, I do notice that in this year in particular, we're talking about a couple of games that are very divergent from, from the past. So Disney had its big revolution in the late eighties with the little mermaid coming into this and the video game system, you could say that, okay, they were just jumping on that bandwagon with little mermaid. But I think what they were also trying to do was make up for a certain amount of exclusivity in the male dominated field of video games. I don't think that was ever intentional, but I think this is when they started to notice that women and girls loved video games and, and liked to play them, but they didn't dumb that down. Like we just talked about how the little mermaid was challenging. Tiny Toons was challenging and it was tough. And for a girl like me, who was almost 10 at this time, it meant something to me to have characters I could relate to and things that I was seeing in my real life that brought me into this video game circle that wasn't just fighting games and football and that kind of stuff. I, I enjoyed that stuff too, but it was nice to see things becoming more relatable. And now, you know, 30 something years later, it's nice to see still that okay, we're starting to shift into this more inclusive area without dumbing it down. And I think it's interesting to note that the company that made The Little Mermaid is Capcom. Capcom. They made all the, like, you know, best fighting games, too. These people who really know what they're doing making games, but then they made most of the Disney games for a while. I think Capcom in general got that right, because they also created a lot of the little handhelds that you, you could get for like 20 bucks at the store to make it more accessible to kids who didn't have a whole lot of money. You know, they they really broadened their horizons, but they made excellent games in lots of different fields. I've always thought that Capcom was one of the best, best makers in that regard. Well, we made good time. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you didn't like it, please give it a pity like anyway. Subscribe to our channel if you're not already subscribed. We put out mostly reviews of music and video games, but we try some other stuff here and there too. Leave a comment about any of these games. Is there anything that we missed from 1991 that you really want to talk about? Or are there any other thoughts about any of these games that you want to bring up, especially anything like Ramin was talking about, do you know more about this tech than we do? I'd, I'd be interested to learn about it. So go ahead and leave us a comment about that. You can also just say hi to my cat, Finn, if you want. He's adorable. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that's about it. So thanks, everybody. Maintain your groovy selves.